Okay, now that I have all the head assets in one group, I have to remember that the only parts I need to cut out cleanly are the parts that overlap with other parts of the body, right? So I definitely have to clean, cut this out cleanly. And I have to cut this out cleanly. And I have to cut this out cleanly. But I don't need to cut out like the back of the mouth because that's already overlapped by other things. So be mindful of the layer order and what you actually need to erase as you go to save you time and just the pain of it. Okay, so here I am still at uh, three pixels of feathering on my lasso. I'm leaving some of these black shadows. I could leave a little bit of that kind of forest floor as well if I wanted to merge that in, but I think I want to keep the eye design pretty clean. So I'm choosing to cut it all out and then just hit delete and it will give me that slight feathering of just three pixels. And I like to do it in sections instead of trying to go around the whole thing at once. And you can do that. At any time you can press the space bar and change to the hand tool and move what you're zoomed in on, right? But I just find it less stressful and less hand cramping to cut it out section by section. And we'll get a lot of practice with this, just like you did with like cutting out your mountains or different elements for your landscape. But here, these are figurative elements, so we want them all to be pretty sharp and clear. So I want to make sure those green leaves aren't part of it, right? So I might even create my own edge. That's what's fun about organic things like creatures. You get to make those decisions. So what's funny is this mushroom does look a little bit like plates of bone. And creature designers are always looking at new places for inspiration. And they do try to avoid cliches. Like, so for so long in the 1990s, all alien creatures were based on bugs. And that all started with H.R. Geiger's uh, alien design for Ridley Scott in the 1980s where the head is based on a beetle's carapace, right? But then you have like Men in Black and you have just all these kind of bug and starship troopers and all these bug aliens. But bugs are kind of a natural choice for a, something that's as different from human as possible, right? But mushrooms are also like a weird substance and undersea life and you can find lots of different options. Now the other nice thing about have the feathering at three at three pixels is that if I delete more than once it will soften my selection more. So you can get uh, variations which was a big comment of mine on your first assignments having a little bit more variation in your edge control. So it's not always routinely sharp and always routinely soft. So sometimes it's softer sometimes it's harder. All right so I go in there I clean it up and all of that overlaps this, right? I'm gonna work with the colors. I might work with some different things. In fact, right now, I'm just gonna flip it. Like that. Because I like that angle more. And now, before I cut out this background one, I'm gonna play with the color a little bit. So as soon as you have two layers that you're cutting out on top of each other, you can go right to image adjustments 
and I start with levels and I want to make the lighting match. And again, I'm going to play with the midtones. So I want to make the lighting a little bit uh, stronger in the midtones. Because there are some deep shadows in here. And I want to limit the highlights just a little bit. And then I'm going to play with color balance because this is much warmer than this is. This has more pink in it. So I'm going to get rid of some of that yellow. That's going to help them to match. Maybe put a tiny bit of pink in there. I don't know that I need too much else. I can brighten the midtones. Take it down to kind of a neutral white. And I can warm up the shadows a little bit because it is still on the top of the head. Okay, so that makes a big difference just in terms of color temperature. And now I'm going to show you a new tool which might be useful to you. I'm not going to use my lasso and try to do all of this because these are clearly different types of pixels, right? And I could use my magic wand with contiguous turned on and just hold down shift a whole lot, right? But because the background varies in shape and color a lot, it might leave things to be desired. So that did a pretty good job there. But the other tool I want to show you is with the magic wand. It's called the quick selection tool. And this is a tool I used to hate because it was never very accurate, but they've gotten a lot better at it. So what you need to know about the quick selection tool is that you want to put it on the plus option where you're adding to each selection. Because otherwise it's really easy to accidentally deselect. And then you choose a brush size and you choose a hardness. So I'm going to choose a hardness that's at about 90. That's about the equivalent of a three pixel feather. And the size I'm going to keep pretty small because I'm using this to detect the edge. So I'm going to start an empty space here. And I'm using my tablet. And it's going to detect that edge for me. So when I kind of overpaint, right, it will detect the edge for me. So it's worth trying if you haven't tried it. Um, you have to watch it, you know, and, and check that it's not selecting something that you don't want to delete. But when you have something just clearly very different from foreground to background, but it's complex shapes, this tool is pretty helpful. But it isn't as accurate as the magic wand. It's just a little bit faster. And sometimes it makes mistakes, but sometimes you can live with those mistakes, right? If it's organic stuff. And it's a lot better than it used to be. It is also leaving these little traces, which I will have to clean up later. But that's a lot easier to clean up with the lasso than tracing this whole thing out. And of course, the more time you take and the more careful you are with the quick selection tool, the more accurate it will be. But the whole trick to digital imaging is knowing when to use the computer algorithms and the programming to make your life easier and when to insist on controlling it yourself so that your creative decisions are, are still your own. Now, if I need to, I can hold down Option, and I can minus away. You know, something that I, I want it uh, to exclude from its selection, right? Like so. But then its default is to add in. because there are deeper shadows now, so this is a little trickier. The contrast of the edges is a lot closer. All 
Ah. So here I might just go back to my three pixel feathered lasso. And if I'm going to have to be that careful, I might as well just cut it out myself. But it worked great on the top. Remember, uh, good Photoshop is being able to make good selections. And those are the things that when you print out your portfolio projects, those little hard edges that you, you didn't soften or the little transitions that gave you the most trouble, they'll be a lot more obvious in a printout than they are on the screen. And that's where attention to detail does pay off. Not in your design and not in the overall effectiveness, but just in your compositing of the transitions and scenes. You see that little trace is very easy to get rid of. I'll just work my way around it. The reason we use a middle gray background is because you can see if you're leaving traces that are dark or traces that are light that way. If we just left our background white, you would find when we cut it out, because we're going to be saving our creatures as PNGs that are floating on an empty background, like a sticker that we can put into our landscape. If we used a white canvas behind it, or even just our sketchbook paper, we would end up leaving a lot of little white <laughs> digital noise around each of our selections, which would be a real pain when we moved it into a different background. Also notice that I am not zoomed in more than 200%. You don't want to go crazy with how much you zoom in because it can just take you ages and ages, right? So never be zoomed in to where you can see the pixel grid. 100% zoom, which you can see in the corner, that's what your print resolution is. So that's generally a pretty good zoom to keep up to 100%. And then if you need to, for difficult things, I go up to 200%, but not beyond that. Because beyond that, the details uh, just aren't worth the time. And because we're working at 350 pixels per inch instead of screen resolution, which is only 72 pixels per inch, you can see that 100% is quite zoomed in. Okay, so these are some of the more careful cutouts because this is the eye of the head. This is a major focal point. And I want to control how this creature comes together. So now I'm going to work with this mushroom, the upper lip mushroom, <laughs> and how it transitions. I'll warp it out here into those uh, kind of jellyfish mushrooms on top. And the first thing I'm going to do before I cut it out is play with the levels. And I get to say, do I want it to go brighter or do I want it to go darker? I think I actually want it to go brighter. So I'm going to limit the highlights just a little bit. And then I'm definitely going to play with the color. Color balance. A little bit more cyan. Right. That actually brings out the yellow. 
to take the orange away from the top brings out the yellow in the bottom.